Hi, I'm Charan. Uh, it's very nice to meet everyone virtually. Uh, I was a postdoc at Princeton and then moved to Chinese University of Hong Kong as a junior faculty member a few months ago. At this talk, I will talk about our work at Princeton on silicon photonic neural networks, which it's a silicon photonic system that can perform neural network computing with high speed, high bandwidth, and low power consumption. And I will discuss its applications for optical communications. A neural networks is the most uh, popular uh, computing model in enabling artificial intelligence. Mathematically, neural networks is quite simple. It consists of many neurons and they are connected to other neurons with a certain weight. And the neuron can be simply a nonlinear function and we can optimize the weights of a neural network to make it perform different tasks. Although neural network model is simple, computing a neural network requires a large number of matrix operations, which make it hard to compute. So currently, neural networks are mostly running on high performance servers or data centers. And apparently, oper uh, neural networks have unable countless AI related applications. The neural networks have extended its uh, application domain to optical communications. Actually, people find neural networks are very suitable in solving different problems in, neural, in optical communications. One reason is neural network can solve problems by learning from data, and optical communication system can generate abundant of data very easily. Another reason is the inherent non uh, rich nonlinearity in the neural network, and this is very useful to deal with the complex and the nonlinear problems in transmission and the networks, and the solution of these problems are usually hard to be obtained analytically. Um, this, a lot of review, review papers provide a quite a comprehensive overview of the most significant contributions of using neural networks and also other machine learning algorithms for optical communications. So far, most of the research will focus on improving the algorithms. However, these algorithms are mostly validated offline with the conventional computers, and the hardware implementation is not very intensely discussed. Today, almost all the DSP algorithms are implemented with ASIC chips. There is no doubt that ASIC chip is very powerful. So last year, CNN released a DSP chip which used the most advanced seven nanometer uh, CMOS technologies. And this chip can provide 800 training operation per second and it can support 800 data rate. However, one question comes out. It's, uh, is DSP sustainable in the future? Apparently, design a chip like this already becomes a big challenge. You can imagine the difficulty of designing a circuit with trillions of transistors and wires. And if any mistake happens, you take a huge amount of time and money to correct this mistake. And more fundamentally, uh, the Moore's law cannot continue forever. Transistor size is quickly reaching its physical limits, and its size its size cannot be infinitely minimized once it's close to atomic level. And this also means the performance of DSP chip cannot be always improving. To compensate the slowing down of Moore's law and sustain the high, perform high processing speed requirement, the current solution is to make the computing unit work in parallel way. For example, in a typical AI hardware, Google Tensor uh, processor unit, uh, tens of thousands of these Mac units work in parallel to produce a large number of matrix operations. However, this uh, solution is also not ultimately scalable because the wires connecting the computing units and the memory would grow exponentially and the huge amount of data moving in these wilds would cause data movement problems. So parallel cost interconnect problems has now become the fundamental bottleneck in many electronic hardware. For better wilds, its resistance and the capacitance increase proportionally with the interconnect distance. So the first problem is in power consumption. When the data move along the wires, the wires are continuously charged and discharged, which consumes significant power. So here is the surprising number. Training a big neural network can emit as much carbon as five cars in their lifetime. And on the other hand, the equipment used for processing 
uh, optical communication systems have very strict the power requirement. Its power consumption has to fit into the power envelope of uh, this uh, receiver rack, which is about like a few uh, tens of watts. In addition to power consumption, uh, these long metal wires will also cause a large RC delay, which limit the response bandwidth of the electronics, mostly within kilohertz to megahertz, whereas the optical communication signals usually have tens of gigahertz bandwidth. So the reason why we wanted to use photonics on neural network computing is photonics, it's perfect for interconnect. Photonic wave side have extremely low loss, which means it consumes no power, almost no power when moving the data across the photonic processor. And the photonics also have a very large bandwidth in contrast to, to electronics. For these reasons, Photonic neural network can achieve efficient and ultra-fast neural network computing that are exactly needed by optical communication systems. So in the following part of my talk, I will provide first to provide a brief of overview of this emerging field of photonic neural networks, and then discuss a specific implementation uh, with the silicon photonics, by, which is proposed by Princeton. And then I will discuss the application of photonic neural networks with a focus on uh, optical communication channel equalization. And I will discuss why photonic neural networks are especially suitable for this application. And next, I will discuss uh, and uh, compare two parallel uh, implementation approaches. One is a photonic reservoir computing and the other one we call it neuromorphic photonic computing. And I will also provide a few examples of these implementations. So what is photonic neural network? We know neural networks are described by the mathematical models. So photonic neural networks is trying to emulate the model of neurons and the neural networks with the photonic devices and the circuits. We call this process neuromorphic. Through neuromorphic, photonic system can execute every function in the neural network that's uh, more efficient and faster. And also through neuromorphic, a neural network can be trained on other platforms, for example, computers using traditional training algorithms. And then the trained neural network can be loaded into the photonic hardware as long as the model of the neural network on different platforms are the same. So, Photonic neural network now is an emerging field and has attracted a very intensive research interest. This field generated many important research outcomes published in high impact journals. And Dr. Sastry recently provided a comprehensive review in Nature Photonics about uh, this field. And uh, apart from the academic interest, there are also some players from industry. Uh, several startups have come out aiming to develop a, a power efficient photonic AI processors, including Luminous, which is a spin off from our Princeton approach. Actually, the photonic neural networks are not a new idea. Uh, Dr. Sotis and Farhart developed these photonic neural network systems with free space optics and clearly pointed out that the power of photonic processing is originated from its interconnected capability and the parallelism. So what has been changed over the past three decades and what make a photonic neural network become now, now become more tangible? Um, I think a very important driver is the development of uh, uh, photonic uh, of fabrication technologies. So you can see over the years, the number of the components that uh, can be integrated on a single chip grows exponential, exponentially, and we call, can call this a photonics Moore's law. And as a result, we can integrate many optical components into a photonic chip to form a large network that can do real tasks. The picture here is a photonic neural network chip designed by our Princeton group and taped out using a standard silicon photonic foundry. Um, we can, you can see the big contrast in footprint compared to the neural network on the left. Uh, now I will discuss the implementation details of the silicon photonic uh, neural network proposed by Princeton. Uh, in a neural network model, the operation of a neuron is simple. The neuron first receives the inputs uh, from the other neurons and then weight the input by coefficient, which we call it weight, and it then sum the weighted inputs. 
this process is equivalent to vector multiplication. And the last, the neuron would apply a nonlinear function on the weighted sum of the signal. In photonic approach, we can use the, the concept of waveless division multiplexing and encode the uh, uh, multiple inputs on different wavelengths. And then so a signal I get weighted by an array of microresonators. The microresonator can work as um, wavelength selective filters and it can be tuned to change the transmission of the signal at different wavelengths. You can see this approach can perform a waking function, which is the most dominating function in the neural network using only passive devices in a parallel way and at speed of light, show, which shows a, a, a big contrast to electronic devices. And after being weighted, the signal is detected by a photodetector. And the photodetector, as we know, uh, the, it receives a total optical power and it converts it into a photocurrent. So the summing function is provided uh, by the photodetector. Then the photocurrent is amplified and it drives the optical modulator after it. The transfer function of a modulator is usually nonlinear, so we can use this to perform the nonlinear function in the neural network. The components, uh, the optical components involved in this system, including the microring array, the photodetector, and the modulator, can all be fabricated with the standard silicon photonic uh, facilities. And the performance, including uh, the speed, uh, the bandwidth, and the power efficient of all these devices have been jointly optimized by the whole optical communication industry. So the hardware platform shown here are inherently compatible with the optical communication signals uh, in terms of uh, speed and the bandwidth. Also, the silicon photonic uh, circuit is uh, uh, describing the in the uh, earlier few slides are scalable to form a large neural network. So here we show uh, the micro image of uh, the micro the micro image of a feed forward neural network and uh, a recurrent neural network fabricated on a silicon photonic chip. And this table here compare the silicon photonic neural networks uh, and the TPU in terms of uh, energy efficiency, uh, latency, and the computing density. And we can see the photonic neural networks promises to have one order of magnitude better in these key computing metrics. Uh, given these advantages, so what are the suitable application of a photonic neural network? First, of course, since the photonic neural network can perform uh, every uh, neural network model, a parent application is to accelerate computing in matrix computing or machine learning. And besides that, we want to fully explore the advantage of photonics, and we are interested in using in applications where the uh, where the, uh, uh, the applications that are hardly be accessed by electronics. And one application domain is uh, in system control and uh, prediction, where low latency is a very critical performance parameter and it's very hard to uh, be achieved for electronic uh, hardware. And another application domain is to process the analog uh, and the wideband signals like optical and the wireless signals. We believe. There are also many other applications of autonomous neural networks, and you are welcome to uh, read our recent review papers discussing these applications. And in this talk, I will focus on one application area, which uses autonomous neural networks for channel equalization. Uh, the neural network theory studies uh, tell us the neural network is capable of uh, approximating any uh, dynamic systems. And this feature is very useful for uh, channel equalization. So suppose there is a, a communication system which can be a fiber communication or wireless communication system. And then we can use a neural network to approximate the inverse of the transmission channel. And then the neural network can, uh, can work as a channel equalizer, which promises to revert many distortions at one time in the transmission uh, system. Uh, actually, photonic neural networks has many good properties, 
that make it especially suitable for optical communication channel. As we know, the optical fiber is a nonlinear channel due to the curl effects, and uh, it has memories because of the fiber dispersion. And accordingly, in a photonic neural network, it provides a high-speed linearities with a compatible speed with uh, of optical signals. And meanwhile, the optical waveguides, which can be easily provided. Uh, uh, we can easily provide a recurrent connection between the neurons and the signals. And this the recurrent connection is very useful to emulate the uh, channel memory. For this reason, uh, photonic neural network promises to process signals directly in the optical domain, uh, which reduce a lot of power and the cost in the uh, analog to digital conver converters, and it can provide the nanosecond scale uh, latency. So the following question is, how do we train the photonic hardware to make it perform the channel equalization task? So here I, we discuss two orthogonal approaches. One approach is reservoir computing, in which the optical layer is trained. And another approach we call it the neuromorphic computing, where we leverage the existing machine learning algorithms to train the full neural network. Uh, so uh, what is reservoir computing? Reservoir computing is a subset of a recurrent neural network. It consists of input layer, a reservoir, which is made of many nonlinear nodes with recurrent connection and output layer. How does it differ from the conventional recurrent neural network? So in reservoir computing, the weights of the input and the reservoir layer are fixed, and only the output layer can be need to be trained. This greatly simplifies the training process. So in order to train the neural network, we only need to calculate the pseudo inversion matrix using linear regression. And here we show a few work that implement the reservoir computing with photonics. And in this work, uh, the nonlinear nodes can be a semiconductor optical amplifier, a Vexel laser, or simply a photo detector. And the connection between the nodes that are fixed uh, uh, photonic waveguides. Um, the reservoir implementation can be simple, further simplified to a delay-based structure. And in this structure, there is only one uh, physical neuron and uh, the delayed loop can create many virtual neurons through time division multiplexing. Apparently, this structure is very easy to be implemented with photonic system. You can use the photonic modulator or the lasers as a nonlinear nodes and use the optical fiber to provide the feedback loop. Uh, this delayed based photonic reservoir has been used in short reach and direct detection system. So these slides here shows two significant work. Both use direct uh, modulated lasers as the nonlinear nodes. The work on the left achieved like a two orders of magnitude improvement in BR with all K signal, and the, the one on the right is able to transmit a 56 uh, gigabit painful signal over a uh, hundred kilometer fiber. And we can see the uh, photonic reservoir compared to uh, the DSP approach, it is a it's capable to achieve the similar performance or even better performance. And also you can see from the figure, uh, when uh, increasing the um, virtual neuron number from eight to 16 uh, can increase the channel equalization performance. However, uh, increasing the nodes number requires to increase the bandwidth and the operation speed of photonic and electronic components in this system. Uh, which can be very hard because the input signal speed is already very fast. So to uh, release the, uh, the demand of uh, high-speed optical and electronic components, this spatial optical reservoir also started. The Weissmann's group uh, simulated a passive photonic reservoir, and this approach achieved better transmission over uh, 200 uh, kilometers uh, because this system has the freedom to optimize the delay between the nodes for better transmission performance. And the uh, Professor Ziba's group uh, used an array uh, waveguide grating to 
uh, slice the signal spectral to a smaller bandwidth and before apply the signals into this reservoir. And this pre-processing procedure uh, makes the reservoir uh, be able to uh, process uh, large dispersions. So here's a quick summary of photonic reservoir. Uh, a reservoir computing first is easy to be implemented with photonics and can be trained simply with leading regression. However, due to the limited trainable components uh, and hardware limitation, in many cases, uh, reservoir computing does not lead to an optimized solution. So the table here compare the reservoir computing with a conventional recurrent neural network uh, where all the parameters are trainable. We can see uh, training a reservoir, of course, it takes a, a significant mass of time, but it also causes more errors. And in many uh, applications uh, where the systems uh, are relatively stable, the training uh, only needs to be done once. So in this application, training time may not be a big problem, and the accuracy is a more important concern. So here we discuss another approach, uh, which we call it neuromorphic photonic computing. And this approach, all the parameters, including the weights and the devices are trainable. Uh, the mathematical model of a photonic neural network can be described by continuous time, uh, by this continuous time differential equation, which S is the neural state, and X is the input of the neural network. And uh, uh, sigma is uh, the transfer function of a photonic neuron, and this W and B are trainable uh, weights and the biases. Now, uh, and then now we uh, this uh, Creates the differential equation and unfold the equation a long time. And it becomes a model of conventional neural network we are more familiar with, and uh, but uh, the neural network has a lot of photonic linearities. Then we can train the every parameter in this neural network with the standard machine learning algorithms and the libraries. Uh, what may, people may worry that the the, the complexity of implementing the, uh, the neural networks with photonics. So we want to point out here the photonic, uh, the neuromorphic photonic approach we discussed here actually is backed up by the large volume photonic integrated circuit ecosystem. Uh, this system can provide the capability of fabricating like, thousands of optical components and provide the technology to control and program the photonic circuits to provide the weights and the biases. And, uh, to, and it provides advanced uh, approaches to package the optics with uh, uh, electronics to make them work together. Supported by these technologies, uh, we were able to demonstrate the use of silicon photonic neural network to compensate the fiber linearities in the trans-Pacific fiber communication system. And in this work, we designed a feed-forward neural network with three layers and 12 neurons and implemented uh, on the silicon photonic chip using the WDM-based uh, uh, neural network system we discussed uh, earlier. And the, in this model, we train the full neural network, including both the weights and the biases. And the weight can be applied to the photonic circuits by tuning the heaters on the microarray. And the neuron biases can be applied by tuning the biases of the modulators. So the trainable, uh, in, this, in this application, this trainable uh, biases are very important because it uh, can uh, optimize the approximation of the higher uh, order linearities in this fiber. Uh, the figure here shows the training uh, procedures. We begin by characterizing the chip linear function, and following that, we apply the characterized activation function in the neural network in, uh, uh, in the neural network model, and then train the neural networks with uh, this atom uh, algorithm uh, using GPU-assisted workstation. And we can see the Q factor of the data increased gradually in the training process, and finally converge after about uh, two, uh, 20,000 steps. And the Q factor of the signal after training is plotted in this figure, and we can see the photonic neural network 
up the trend, the Q factor of the transmission link is increased by 0.66 dB as compared to the, uh, uh, the, the, the system without any nonlinear compensation. And uh, also the photonic neural network is capable of achieving comparable uh, Q factor performance compared to the three-step digital back propagation. And after training, we will upload uh, the trained weights and biases to the photonic chip. And after that, the photonic chip can perform a fiber linearity compensation function. So uh, to really upload the weights to the photonic neural network, we develop a microring control approach using the end of the heat, using these end of the heaters. We demonstrate that we can control the microings from multiple channels simultaneously with an LPC over 8.5 bits. And this LPC is similar uh, to the computing LPC that is commonly used in the machine learning hardware such as TPU and uh, in the DSP chips. So by using this microcontrol approach, uh, we can accurately uh, control the the photonic circuits and upload the, the trained parameters to the photonic chip. And after that, these uh, per, uh, devices can work as a signal processor and improve the Q factor uh, of a 16 uh, com uh, signal by uh, 0 0.6 dB. We also compare the photonic hardware with the simulated neural networks on the computer. We can see the photonic neural network architect, uh, can achieve like a very similar Q factor um, compared to the uh, simulated neural networks using computers. Uh, this, uh, this results also validates our, uh, our neuromorphic, photonic, neuromorphic photonic computing approach uh, in which we can apply the same algorithms on different hardware. So this is a conclusion of uh, my talk. Uh, I especially wanted to mention the last point. Uh, although there are already many demonstrations on using photonics for optical communication uh, processing, we still need to be very careful in claiming the advantage of photonics. I think a very comprehensive comparison needs to be done in order to decide which approach is really better and it uh, should the uh, consider different types of uh, transmission system. And uh, finally, and also most importantly, I would uh, like uh, to thank my supervisors at uh, Princeton, uh, Professor Paul Prusno and the Princeton group, including the current members and the formal members, Marvin, Alice, Simak, and also wanted to thank our collaborators and the AEC lab for contributing so much to this work. Uh, thank you again for your attention.